By the end of this chapter, you should be able to identify the working principles of a rotary vane type steering gear, identify the working principles of a ram type steering gear, list the relative advantages of ram and rotary vane type steering gears. There are two types of electrohydraulic steering gear working principles the ram type and the rotary vane type. Both types use the principle that force is pressure times area. In both types, an incompressible fluid, hydraulic oil, is pumped into a chamber under pressure. The higher the pressure of the fluid, or the larger the area of the actuator, the greater the force exerted. In the ram type, the chamber is formed by rams or pistons in a cylinder. In the rotary vane type, each pressure chamber is formed between a fixed and moving vane. On the ram type, the piston or ram is connected to the tiller, often through a Rapson slide, which changes the straight line motion of the rams into rotary motion of the tiller and rudder stock. This means that ram type steering gears require more space than rotary vane types, and that the working angle is limited compared with the rotary vane steering gear. The limited working angle is not necessarily a constraint, as most rudders are only designed to work through a similar range. An advantage claimed for ram systems is that they are of simpler construction, and therefore easier to repair and maintain. The rotary vane gives a constant torque at all rudder angles, whilst with a ram type, the leverage effect of the tiller, and therefore the torque, increases with rudder angle. Ram type steering gears generally need a higher hydraulic pressure than rotary vane type steering gears for the same application. Because they are connected to the rudder stock through a moving linkage, ram type steering gears need a separate rudder carrier bearing, whilst with rotary vane gears, the rudder carrier bearing can be either included in the rotary vane housing or separate. This is a schematic drawing of a steering gear. You can click on the buttons marked port or starboard to give a rudder command. We have slowed down the effect of pressurising the oil in this simulation, so you have more time to see what is happening. You can also mouse over the different components to find out what each one does. The schematic drawing shows a rotary vane gear with two chambers, with one pump running. Using both pumps will double the speed of the rudder. We have now added a few more features to the hydraulic circuit, which, as you will see in a later chapter, will make it suitable for use on certain types of tankers. This time we will use it to operate a ram-type steering gear. 
After some instruction on the operation of the various parts of the hydraulic circuit, you will be able to click on the buttons marked port or starboard to give a rudder command and view the hydraulic oil flow. You should also click on the different system symbols for more information. The drawing shows a two-ram system with a very simple tiller arrangement, with one pump running. Using both pumps will double the speed of the rudder. Mouse over the different components to get an explanation of each. At the moment, the left-hand pump is running. There is no rudder movement order, so the pump is discharging pressure oil through its directional control valve back to its oil reservoir. The rudder is hydraulically locked in position by the check valves next to the counterbalance valves. When a rudder movement is ordered, the directional control valve will be moved by one of the solenoids. Pressure oil will pass through one of the non-return valves next to the counterbalance valves. Both automatic isolation valves are held open by springs, allowing oil from the one pump to go to both rams. At the same time, the pressure of supply oil will operate the other counterbalance valve to allow the passage of oil from the left-hand ram back to the reservoir. By linking both sides of the hydraulic system, we have the maximum torque available to move the rudder. You can click on the buttons marked port or starboard to give a rudder command and view the hydraulic oil flow. In rotary vane steering gears, the pressure chamber is formed between the fixed and moving vanes. Ram-type steering gears use a piston or ram in a cylinder, but need some way of converting straight line motion to rotary motion. This is how a very basic hydraulic circuit works. In order to meet the SOLAS requirements for some ships, the hydraulic circuit needs to be more complex. Once you're ready, Move on to the next page for an end of chapter assessment.